Photo was the name of the label. That's where it comes from, really. I mean, we when I started the label, I got um, the designer Mark Standier. He came up with this design, and I needed something for my label, a design, a name, all kinds of stuff. And he said, "Yeah, you can use this logo that I made for no reason." What suits this really slick, weird, abstract uh, design? It kind of sounds like it's techy for sure. It might have some techno on the label. Yeah. I think the pH was a bit more like hip hoppy, kind of old school hip hop feel to it, you put it all together and it looks a bit Star Trek, you know. Um, I think it's actually usually just any life experience, any kind of passing sound that you hear in the street, you know, thunderstorms, traffic, all that kind of thing, you hear like sound all the time and it's, I'm always incorporating any kind of sound effect into whatever music I'm making, you know. We kind of all came up at the same time, you know, so I remember when I was working in a record store at the time and, and Bookham would come around and he, there was a bit of a buzz about his name, there's this DJ called LTJ Bookham, what kind of weird name is that, <laughs> yeah. you know, and he would come around and he had his first couple of releases on good looking records and he'd bring them around himself in the back of the car and sell them to the store and we were a big supporter of his music. And I just started putting out my first couple of 12 inches at the time, my Stiffy 18 records. And, um, and I'd, we'd all play music to each other all the time. I mean, it's literally a DJ making and selling his own music, manufacturing the records and taking them to the store. And, you know, I'd just give him a dap of what I'd be making the next thing he was playing it. And I was an artist Aquarius on Good Looking Records the next thing. So I was part of Good Looking Records on one hand. And at the same time, the sort of other big sound at that time was Heads, you know, and that was, that was really my other home base, you know. Well, drum and bass was, it was really what came out, out of the warehouse parties, the, the original grave scene, where it was like reggae mixed with techno mixed with hip hop. And um, it was this collision of all the different subcultures in England, basically. And it was whoever wanted beats and a little bit faster that became drum and bass, you know. Well, I still think um, like hidden camera and modus operandi would what defined photo, almost, you know. But I think it, I think it's uh, important for any artist to keep evolving. I'd always have elements of that in it because it came from me in the first place, but I think it's important for me not to, not to re reference back to those tracks too much. I kind of, I look back at particular tracks and, and records like Modus, like Mind to Give, um, and I'm happy I made them. You know, happy I made those songs, I'm proud of them. Well, I think actually the whole, I'm not sure I ever felt a shift between any of those, you know? It's been more like one gradient mm -hmm. all the way through of lots of different projects and lots of different music. So I think when you hear, if you look back, you can see these shifts that, you know, in hindsight, you can say there was a shift here, a shift there, he went in this direction and that direction. But that's the big difference. I think that the biggest effect that dubstep has had is to open music up open it up from the most commercial to the most underground. I think drum and bass certainly got the respect of, of a lot of artists and you'd have people from Bjork, David Bowie, Trent Reznor, a lot of, a lot of amazing, credible artists um, were very interested in what was going on in drum and bass. But it didn't open it up. It didn't open all of music up. Mm. So I think it was only the most sort of connoisseur, cutting edge artists 
um, from the commercial side who were taking an interest. And now music's blown wide open and I think dubstep has a lot to do with that. I think um, the technology that we have and that everyone being connected has meant that the music's all come together. I mean, you've got, you've got up and coming artists being found on either side of the globe, you know, so that's brought it all together. But, you know, for me, I miss that. The, the whole thing of going into like black market records and you're too scared to ask any questions because it's all so intimidating and you know you've got like Ray Keith standing there behind the counter going you want to fucking buy this <laughs> and you're like okay <laughs> you know it's my last five pounds but I'll buy it <laughs> you know and that whole that whole dynamic it's a bit more hardcore I suppose you got to get out there just making records back then I mean you had to get out there you had to go and uh, you had to go to some dodgy pressing plant in, the, in some back alley somewhere and like with a wad of cash and like pay the guy and hopefully the thing came out right and then you've got to take it to the distributor and you don't know if the distributor's going to pay you and when you go to get your money there's a bunch of big dudes there and you, you know that whole yeah. hustle. Oh it's my hometown, it's my hometown for sure. I mean, the, I think the first six months I spent here was getting used to the difference between London and LA, which is huge. And uh, now it's so nice to fly to LAX and be back home. You know, very a very easy place to live. I think actually the biggest change was doing doing film music and what that added to my palette. You know, so there's been a big effect on my music. It's been working on film and TV. Yeah. You know, you, you're asked to do some acoustic guitar piece for seen in a movie and I think well I've never touched an acoustic guitar in my life so <laughs> what do you do here and that challenge is, has uh, made me grow as an artist you know you get asked to do a piece of music that you've never done before anything in that style and uh, you conquer that and you think wow that came out really well and suddenly you've got another string to your bow you know I mean I think a lot of my songs are soundtracks to imaginary movies you know if you take the beats out of a lot of them they could be a sound bit in a, in a scene in a movie Well, I've made, I've made the mistake of saying what's going to happen before. I'm going to be pushing the boundaries on, on everything that's, that's on this record, so... Oh, I'm looking forward to it. I mean, I've been all over Europe for the past few months since the beginning of the year, and I'm looking forward to doing a, an amazing show. And to play a, to a home crowd at an amazing venue, yeah, I can't wait. Actually, what's nice for this show is I've got time to prepare some extra special bits and pieces. It's going to be a mix of a lot of stuff that I've been working on, um, a lot of different styles. Um, there's a few, a few beats from other people, but it's going to be all over the map. It's going to be all over the map. Just hope that you, you connect with the music, because everything that I make is I, I make for myself on the assumption that if I do the best music I can for myself, then other people are going to like it too. So it's my offering. <laughs> Actually, that's what makes it worthwhile. When it, even if there's only 10 people who had that effect on, that's actually, for me, the proudest moment making music. Yeah. You know, like, especially like, um, a few years ago when, when like, Gulf War was going on and things like that, and you'd have, you'd run into, you'd be doing some show somewhere in the Midwest or something, and some, like, guy who was home on leave would come to the show and say that's what got him through when he was, like, in Baghdad or something. Or I was on an aircraft carrier station here, and your music is the only thing that like gave me a bit of light at the end of the tunnel. Stuff like that, that really hits the spot. There are certain songs for me that, you know, like The Message, Grandmaster Flash, you know, Planet Rock, Africa Bombana, tracks like that, you know, they made me who I am today. Absolutely. So when there's just those few people in the world who were like, one of those tracks for me was one of your songs, that means a lot. You might be alive, but you just breathe to pass the time. You're so lucky, so lucky to have it all.